gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Share with each other, share with each other, share with each other and celebrate. Share with each other, share with each other, share with each other and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Sing with each other, sing with each other, sing with each other and celebrate. Sing with each other, sing with each other, sing with each other and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Hello. Welcome to the Children's Liturgy for the fourth Sunday in Lent. You notice that we're, we have rose vestments today. This is called Laetare Sunday. It's halfway through Lent. And this Sunday, we rejoice. What do we have to rejoice about? That Lent is half over, but also, and mostly, because this is the day the church reminds us that we share in the victory that Jesus won over death by his suffering. So we're rejoicing that we share in Christ's victory over death today. Now, I have a question for you. Who gave you your name? Mm -hmm your mom and your dad mm -hmm. and I bet they thought about it for a long time maybe they told you how and why they chose your name your name is a very very important part of you it's how people recognize you it's the way people call you when your parents took you to be baptized, the priest or the deacon who baptized you asked your parents and your godparents, what name do you choose for your child? And your parents and godparents had to respond with your full name. If you have one or two or three names, like Arthur Stephen Patrick, you have to say the whole name. And then after that, the priest or deacon pours water over your head and makes you a member of Christ's church. You became a member of the Roman Catholic Church. You are a Christian because of your baptism. And after you were baptized, Everyone there made the sign of the cross on your forehead, like this. Do that right now. Do that to yourself. Make a little cross on your forehead. And then everybody in the room with you should make crosses on each other's foreheads. Go ahead. Do it because you are each chosen by God. You are one of God's chosen people. And that in itself is something to rejoice about. Today, we're going to be hearing two stories, one about a shepherd boy who was chosen by God for a very special job. And the other story is about a blind man who was chosen to show God's glory. 
Now bow your heads if you're finished signing on your foreheads. Are you all finished signing? Good. Now bow your heads and we'll pray. Please close your eyes. We will keep a moment of silence as we talk to God in our hearts. Let's think about the times in the past week when we have not acted like children who belong to God, but have committed sin instead. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, because you belong to the Father and we belong to you, we are called to become like you, good, honest, and truthful. Forgive us our sins and help us grow in your love that through our words and deeds, you may be praised forever and ever. Amen. Open your eyes and let's light our candle. Our first reading tells about the time God sent his prophet to Bethlehem to anoint a new king for Israel. Pay attention to how God's choice surprises even the prophet Samuel. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Take some olive oil with you and go to a man named Jesse who lives in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. When Jesse and his sons got there, Samuel saw Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, and thought, he must be the one the Lord has chosen. But the Lord told Samuel, don't choose him just because he's tall and handsome. He is not the one I have chosen. People judge others by what they look like, but I don't. I, ju I judge by what's in a person's heart. Jesse sent seven of his sons to Samuel. But each time Samuel would say, the Lord has not chosen him. Finally, Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? Jesse answered, Yes, my youngest son David is out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We won't start until he gets here. Jesse sent for David and he came. He was a healthy, good-looking boy with a sparkle in his eyes. The Lord told Samuel, this is the one. Pour the olive oil on his head. Samuel poured the oil on David's head while his brothers watched. At that moment, the Holy Spirit took control of David and stayed with him from then on. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. 
Our responsorial psalm today will be sung. Repeat after me. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. You let me rest in fields of green grass. You lead me to streams of peaceful water and you refresh my life. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You are true to your name, and you lead me along the right paths. I may walk through valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me, and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. While my enemies watch, you honor me as your guest and you fill my cup until it overflows. Your kindness and love will always be with me each day of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Do you know what it means to take after your dad and mom? It means that you look or act a lot like your mom or dad. Well, in our second reading, St. Paul reminds us that we all should take after God because God is our Father. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do as God does. After all, you are his dear children. Let love be your guide. Christ loved us and offered his life for us as a sacrifice that pleases God. You used to be like people living in the dark, but now you are people of the light because you belong to the Lord. So act like people of the light and make your light shine. Be good and honest and truthful as you try to please the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. In today's gospel, 
we will hear about a blind man chosen by Jesus to receive two special favors, a cure for his blindness and the good news that Jesus is the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of John. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, as Jesus walked along, he saw a man who had been blind since birth. Jesus spit on the ground. He made some mud and smeared it on the man's eyes. Then he said, go and wash off the mud in Siloam pool. The man went and washed in Siloam, which means one who is sent. When he had washed off the mud, he could see. The man's neighbors and the people who had seen him begging wondered if he really could be the same man. Some of them said, he was the same beggar, while others said he only looked like him. But he told them, I am that man who was blind and begging. Then how can you see, they asked. He answered, someone named Jesus made some mud and smeared it on my eyes. He told me to go and wash it off in Siloam pool. When I did, I could see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know, he answered. When Jesus heard what had happened, he went and found the man. Then Jesus asked, Do you have faith in the Son of Man? He replied, Sir, if you will tell me who he is, I will put my faith in him. You have already seen him. Jesus answered, and right now he is talking with you. The man said, Lord, I put my faith in you. Then he worshiped Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. You see, just as God chose David to be the next king of Israel, Jesus chose the blind man to cure his blindness and to reveal his glory. But both of those people needed to have faith. They needed to believe in God. They needed to trust that God would give them what they needed. David and the blind man were both 
changed by their encounter with God. The first reading said that after David had the oil poured over his head, the Holy Spirit came and was with him from then on. The Holy Spirit brings wisdom, understanding. And when Jesus spit on the mud and put it on the blind man's eyes and said, go and wash in the pool, the man could have said, what for? I'm blind. But he didn't. He had faith that the man who put the mud on his eyes knew what he was doing. He washed in the pool and he could see. And so when Jesus said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He said, tell me who this person is and I will believe. And Jesus said, I am the Son of Man. And the man said, I believe in you. And then he worshiped him. His life was changed forever because he had faith in Jesus. That's why we call baptism the sacrament that changes us forever. Because when the water is poured over our heads and we are also blessed with olive oil, holy oil on our foreheads, our lips and our chests, we are changed forever. We become the children of God. We are chosen, like David was chosen and like the blind man was chosen. Now let's play a little game. Um, it celebrates God's choice of us. So tell me, can you uncut a cake? No, once a cake is cut, it's been cut. You can't put it back together. Can you unsing a song? No, once you sing the song, it's been sung. You can't unsing it. Can you unthrow a ball? Nope, once you throw that ball, it's gone. Can you unfry an egg? No. Can you unpick a flower? Can't put it back on the stem once it's been picked. Can you unread a book? Can you untell a secret? These are all nonsense things. Can you unrip a paper? Can you unlight a fire? Can you unblow a bubble? Can you unlick an ice cream cone? No, oh, once you lick that cone, that ice cream's melting on your tongue. You can't put it back on. Just as that seems so silly. Think of this. One thing God will never do is unchoose you. All right, well, let's stand up and profess our faith. I would like you to respond, I do, to each question. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, who chose us to be his very own when we were baptized? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who came that we might have fullness of life in body and soul? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit who descended on us when we were baptized? and to this very day helps us see with the eyes of faith? I do. Knowing that we are specially blessed by God our Father, let us pray for blessings upon our brothers and sisters throughout the world. 
our response to each petition will be, Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That our Holy Father, the Pope, and all church leaders will be refreshed by God's grace during these days of Lent, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. That all the wealthy and healthy people of the world will help the poor and the sick, as Jesus did, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. That all of us here will live up to our calling to be God's children, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. For all the people of Turkey and Syria who've been affected by the earthquake, we ask God to hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord. For all the people who are cold and hungry and tired. Who are all God's children. We pray. Hear us, O Lord. And now, if you have anyone or anything that you would like to pray for, do that now. We pray, hear us, O Lord. Loving God, thank you for choosing us to be your very own. Lead us along right paths until we are all together again in heaven, rejoicing in your love forever and ever. Amen. Continue on your Lenten journey we're halfway to Easter. Pray with each other, pray with each other, pray with each other and celebrate. Pray with each other, pray with each other, pray with each other and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, gather together and celebrate. Gather together, gather together, 